welcome back to my channel with a new video this is Nora and that's my cat Sushi I have another cat um, <laughs> he's playing um, in the other room I've been actually putting off making this video for a few days and I was very very critical doing this video I didn't I didn't know if I wanted to make this video or not uh, a lot of times I would think maybe I will sound like a jerk but I actually thought about it and I don't think it's the wrong time to talk about this because uh, I've seen so many people from the government talking about this so I don't see why we as a Middle Eastern shouldn't talk about this and though I was a bit doubtful I'm gonna do this video and I want I have a few opinions about what's happening in the world right now uh, of course I'm very very sad that um, Ukraine is going through that right now it is very very saddening as a human as just a human being watching this and seeing people going through this is very disheartening and it's very sad especially as a middle eastern we understand the struggle why because we have been through war more than a lot of people a lot of other people don't know the feeling and we know how it feels to go through war that you don't want to be in we exactly know the feeling and that's why we are, we feel very bad for people in Ukraine and of course I want people to help them first of all like if you want to help Ukraine I'm gonna put some links also down below I think it's very important for people to help each other no matter what what your ethnicity are we're all human beings and we should help each other no one should go through that no matter what your ethnicity what languages you speak how, how old you are no one should go through this and as people we that we know exactly how it feels like we know the monstrosity and the trauma that goes after and through this war we exactly know the trauma and the the how bad it feels like even after even if you survive you're gonna feel bad uh, even consciously you don't feel bad and you're okay with this unconsciously you're gonna get affected by it in some way even if uh, you escaped and fled the country, it is also hard to leave someone's country against their will. So we exactly know how it is and I want people to help them of course. It is a very essential to help each other and I, like, I completely, when I heard the news it was very disheartening to hear that. Because we don't want other people to go through this as well. Set all that aside. I don't want to go talk about politics too much and why Putin is doing this. We all know he wants the the land that he considered his a long time ago. Um, he doesn't want um, Ukraine to be part of NATO. That will lose a lot of his power and he's going to feel like he's alone in this. And if Ukraine it, joined NATO, he's not going to be able to take it in the future because um, a lot of countries will help Ukraine. So he's doing that before anything happens. Um, and what's the other cat? <laughs> he, he sometimes annoys this cat. That's why I, sometimes I separate them. Sometimes it's fine, but sometimes they annoy each other. We all know I'm not going to go too much into politics. Yes, he is crazy, of course. Yes, the, what he's doing, no one, even the Russians, are not agreeing with that everyone is not happy with what he's doing i mean he's a dictator he's doing that to fulfill his ego it's just to for his ego because he doesn't want to hurt his pride he don't he doesn't want to see another part of his kind of land he considered ukraine still his for some reason he doesn't want to see part of his land be a part of nato i'm gonna put that all aside and i know i have a lot of american you know, watchers, they like to see uh, about Lebanese life and how it is. And I'm, I'm trying to update you guys as much as I could. I'm gonna try to tell you how Lebanese people feel about all this. And I'm gonna 
uh, try to voice their opinion. I talk to many Lebanese people, many Arabs, many many Middle Easterns, even many brown people. And even though they're happy, they're seeing a big support for Ukraine and that they need it, of course. They're also a bit upset, not just a bit, they're really upset from watching the news. Um, it's not that we just got upset alone. We've seen so many people call us uncivilized. We saw many people call us um, not people worth, we're not worthy people, we're not human beings, we're not, we shouldn't be cared for, we shouldn't be supported, and that's why we are upset. Not because of people are helping Ukraine, we're happy that is happening, but we're seeing so many white people when i'm saying white by the way i i don't mean white at my skin color is white i totally get it as a skin color yeah i am i am a white person <laughs> but when i say white usually it means someone from europe uh that originated in europe but we middle easterns are not really called white at least in us a lot of people don't call us white even though my skin color is pretty pretty white i would call in in, in lebanon i would call myself a white person i had no idea the people in here just call white people as you know european a lot of middle easterns are not as white as me i'm pretty white for a middle eastern um there are my dad is pretty brown he he looked really like he's not white at all you can tell he's arab pretty much very upsetting for us that seeing all those white people call us those things they were trying to give excuse on why we're not worthy to be supported to be and why they didn't have room for us in their countries because we're not people of worth we're not bringing anything to the table we're uneducated we're uncivilized even though that's all wrong um so it's kind of upsetting that white people see us that way that they don't see us as human beings they don't see us equal to them it is very 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 upsetting as a middle eastern to see all those reactions and if you haven't seen what I'm talking about, I'm going to show a few clips. We are in the 21st century, we are in a city European and we have a de missiles de croisière like si we were in Iraq or in Afghanistan. You can imagine it. It will be sans doute an immigration of great quality, in revanche. Ce sont des intellectuels. Je ne parle pas là de Syriens qui fuient, qui fuient les bombardements du régime syrien soutenu par Vladimir Poutine. On parle d'Européens qui partent dans leur voiture qui ressemble à nos voitures. Nous ne sommes pas face à des migrants qui vont passer dans une logique d'immigration. This isn't a place with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know, this is a relative. Sorry, it's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed, children being killed every day with Putin's missiles. So as you see, they only consider you as a human being if you drive cars, <laughs> if you have blonde hair and blue eyes, even though we drive cars. And a lot of us actually have blonde hair and blue eyes. But apparently, that's what you need to, to do or have to be a human being. There's nothing wrong with not having blonde hair and blue eyes. There's nothing wrong with not driving a car. At least you're supporting the environment and you're being a good person that taking care of the environment. Yeah. The unthinkable has happened to them and this is not a developing third world nation this is Europe also I've been seeing this image that is being uh, talked about and a lot of people are, are posting this image thinking it's it's a girl it's a Ukrainian girl fighting against a Russian Russian soldier and people are very upset and they're sending their support and they, they're very sad when they see this picture. But they had no idea what this really is. 
this picture was taken a long time ago and it's actually a Palestinian girl confronting an Israeli soldier that wants to invade their place and their land. So why is that allowed and not the Ukrainian land? Why when Russia wants to invade Ukraine, we feel bad for them, even though we should feel bad for them. Their land is being stolen, their lives are being taken. It's very normal people should feel bad about it. But why is that not allowed, but other countries invading them is allowed? Why Iraqis, why Iraq was allowed, why Palestine was allowed, why Syria was allowed, why Afghanistan was allowed, why all those countries were allowed, but this one is not. Apparently we're not human beings for them and our land should be invaded. We should, we just a bunch of terrorists that do not have lives and we should get used to be actually in wars and that's how people see us now. If you're talking about this logic, Russia, actually Ukraine was part of Russia. Ukraine is a big, was a big part of Russia took its independence not too long ago. And then you look at Palestine and Palestinian people. They've had this land for a long, long, long time ago. Is Ukraine not allowed to join back Russia? But Palestine should be invaded and taken back by people and claim that the land is theirs, even though they're not been in this land for thousands of years but the land of Ukraine shouldn't be back to Russia. Those two shouldn't be allowed. Both, they want to be free. Both, they don't want to be invaded. Both want to, wanted to keep their lands. Both were fighting for their lands and lives and their families' lives. Why is that one allowed and the other one not? Why we're supporting and giving all the support to one country and not the other. The Palestinians are defending every day their lands and even when they pick up some guns, not even guns, some stones to defend themselves, they're regarded as terrorists. But when Ukrainians hold their guns to defend their lands, they're heroes. I mean, of course, they are heroes for sure they're defending and I'm very it's very it's very actually it's very respectful to see that why isn't that support also for Palestinians who who they have been trying to defend their lands for years and they are regarded as terrorists by all the west and they're seeing them as savages and with all that they don't have place to flee they're not given a country another country to be in and to feel safe in and a lot of people a lot of israelis claim that the land of israelis claim that the lands were empty well that is not true when the israeli the the jewish people came to Palestine, a lot of Palestinians fled to Lebanon, to the Middle East. We saw a huge amount come to our lands seeking help. Those people were in those lands. Those lands were not empty. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of Palestinians right now not in their country where they should be. Well, also the Iraqis that are... that saw their countries being torn apart by the West and no one gave them a hand. Now their country is a mess and they're trying to pick up the pieces and no one's giving them a hand still. While well, Afghanistan is obviously people are trying to flee but not a lot of people are trying to help them. Also with Lebanese people going through war, we went through war Many times no one tried to sanction them or trying to support us even though we were the weak ones and we had no way of defending ourselves. And yeah, Lebanon is now being torn apart, not just by our government, but who put this government 
is the Syrians that are supported by Iran that is also supported by Russia and no one's putting any sanctions on those countries for our sake We've been torn apart the last couple of years and people are dying in poverty and people are dying of hunger and people are fleeing their homes. They are sick and tired of fighting because no one's helping us and it's pretty tiring when you have all the word against you and try to fight by yourself. So yeah, I'm not upset that Ukraine is getting help. I'm actually really happy to see human beings for a first time standing with next to each other but I'm upset at the people that don't consider us human beings I'm upset at us and why are we viewed less than other people just because we're not white I'm upset that also North Korea for example just because they're Asians and they've been living through poverty their, their country is just being torn apart their, their people can't even live properly. They don't have any medication or any, any way to contact the outside world, but no one is helping them. No one is sanctioning, san sanctioning the people that are helping North Korea to stay in power. No one is trying to help them. And why? Because they're not white. There are many, 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 many other countries that are going through the same thing as Ukraine, but no one try to help them even like i look at the war that is happening now there like i get really like flashbacks of what in other countries happened and in my own country as well it's very hard to go through war it is very tiring mentally sometimes even though i didn't go through war that much maybe it was a month and when i was a kid I remember just brief moments. I still I still dream a lot of times that our building is being destroyed. Buildings around us are being torn apart by warplanes. This is what feels like going through war. And that's literally almost every Middle Eastern life right now. Imagine the Syrians, how they live. Imagine the Iraqis, how they live. Imagine how people from Afghanistan, how they live. They have to live in poverty and hunger with the mental illness and with the PTSD and the trauma. I've seen so many upsetting videos. I'm, I'm, it's just sad. I'm not angry, just very, very sad to see how really white people in the government see us. I'm sure that not all white people see it through like that. When I was in Lebanon, I had such a weird idea about the West that a lot of people hate us. But actually, when I moved to US, I saw a lot of warm people, a lot of loving people that loved Middle Easterns and loved knowing about other cultures. And that's what made me happy. But fortunately, the people in the government are the racist ones. A lot of people, I, I love this, that a lot of like, white people are also talking about this which makes me really happy that at, at last we're trying to see each other as equal and as human beings and not as skin color and where you're from and what languages you speak a few, a few days ago i was got looking through instagram and a friend shared the story which i i saw as very moving and it really like hit something in me and I wanted to share this story. Someone were talking about the story in, the, in Lebanon while there was war happening. So, one night a long time ago in the middle of the war, my parents drove us to a port in Junia, that's a place in Lebanon, and we were smuggled of the, out of the country under a sky full of gunfire on a boat that made me vomit. And I could not take my toy with me. And my mom kept telling me, it's okay, we're going on vacation. And it didn't feel like a vacation. But apparently there were lands where there were no bombs to wake up, to wake us up in the middle of the night where war wasn't all around. And we landed in Cyprus where we, where we hurdled like cattle. 
and waited for three days for our visas and traveled to America and the entire time my father would tell us shh don't speak Arabic they can't know we're Arabs here and wear your crosses and speak French and we started a life in America where we're not Arabs but they cut off your ears and if they don't like your face it's barbaric but hey it's home and so we were and so we were French and I forgot all my Arabic and I never learned about all about Al Mutanabi or Sabah. Sabah is a you know um, Lebanese singer. <laughs> but I learned about George Washington and how people whispered when I told them I was from Lebanon. So this is uh, just a little little something about what Arabs and just not Middle Easterns or like brown and black people go through. The difference with black people, they can't hide. It's more apparent, uh, but for Middle Easterns, they sometimes can hide the, where they're from. If they're skin, they have like white skin or like blonde hair or something, they they can hide where they're from. Uh, that that's how people, non-white people, are treated. You're not supposed to tell where you're from, even though we were going through war and trying to find a better place to live in a lot of them try to escape and not tell anyone where they're from because they will be judged or they will be thrown away like garbage like they said they were thrown like cattle so it's it is disgusting to see the difference I want everyone to have this opportunity to, to flee the war, even have support to stay in the land where they want to stay. And yeah, like even my dad, I said he was, he, he, looks, he looked very non-white, he had brown skin, and his features looked a lot like an Arab person. And he, by the way, we were living in France for a while. My dad was a doctor, at least trying to be one, trying to live as one in France. And But unfortunately, all the French people didn't want to give him a chance. They saw him just as an Arab terrorist and they closed all his the opportunities he should have in his face and told him to go back home. That's why we couldn't continue living in France. He looked very Arab and he couldn't hide the fact that he was one. But that's why we went back to Lebanon, even though I love Lebanon, but it's pretty sad that we couldn't get a chance like any other white person to live and have a decent life. And the thing is, we all were born in France. I was born in France and we lived a lot of our lives not a lot. My, my brother lived a good 9-10 years in France. He went to French school. He was born there. And we wouldn't get our citizenship. They told us it was not allowed. And we're pretty sure, because we were Arabs, we didn't get the citizenships. Um, they gave us stupid excuses on why we couldn't get the citizenship. That's how it feels like. I, I want it in this video to be very raw about how it felt like. I don't want to come and blame other countries because I know it's not the right way to do it. But a lot of Western governments are to blame. I'm not going to blame the people. The people are amazing. I wanted to show you from a Lebanese person, from a Middle Eastern person, the differences between between being a white person and a not white person uh, and how we live, difference on how they live. And of course, I can't hide, like I say, I'm not gonna be, oh my God, like people are so racist to me. Of course, if you're a black person, you have it so much worse. You can't hide your identity. You can't, can't hide, and there's, you shouldn't even hide who you are. That's ridiculous. But apparently in this world and time, you have to hide who you are to be accepted in this society and to be given the opportunities that other people are getting. Yeah, my dad was pretty brown. He didn't look like he was he was white at all. And he, he had so much trouble in his life and I saw how he 
he really suffered and uh, had to pick up himself so many times and say, hey, it's okay, I'm gonna feed my kids somehow. That's all I wanted to talk about. Um, I hope that didn't give you a headache. <laughs> But I, I, I felt like this needs to be talked about. So um, thank you for listening to me and me blabbering. Um, I know this video is not about Lebanon, but it was kind of about it as well because I wanted to show how we feel. And this is not just my feelings. I've talked to so many people, Lebanese people and Arab people before coming here and talk to, talking to you about this. I've discussed so many things with them and I've seen how upset they are and they don't feel good about it at all. So that's why I'm talking to you. It's just not me, just one person. It's I'm, I'm bringing you so many people's voices right now, you have no idea. So thank you for watching this video and if you want to hear more about me, you can subscribe to my channel. It will help reaching out more people and how we live. Um, as human beings, not as less than that. And um, thank you, <laughs> thank you for watching this video. Like this video and share it if you'd like. And thank you for watching. Uh, say bye. Say bye. She's sleeping. <laughs> thank you for watching. Bye bye.